In our Sunday school lesson last week, we began to take a look at Paul teaching believers to live with a mindset of putting God and his ways first. That is a mindset where we are to not only love ourselves, but we are to live for Christ which calls for us to live for all people that are around us. We are to love ourselves and we are to love our neighbors as we love ourselves as well. Here in our Sunday School lesson this week, we'll see where Paul, he continues on that notion to where we are to choose God over everything. We'll see that as we begin here in our Sunday School lesson this week, there in the third chapter of Philippians and the seventh verse where our lesson, it opens with Paul telling us that the things that he once considered gain, he now counted loss for Christ. So Paul, he was speaking about, we should understand the worldly gains that he had once acquired in his life. These are the things that many people, they are in search of today, the riches of this world. As I said in my recent sermon, many people Today they live with an ambition that is of the world and they grind and they hustle for nothing but the riches of this world. That is what Paul was speaking of as what he once considered to be gained there in the seventh verse. But there in the eighth verse, we'll see that of those worldly things that Paul once had considered to be gained, Paul, he now counted them to be rubbish. In his mind, they were rubbish. They were worthless in his mind in comparison to the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. Let us understand here that Paul was saying that there was nothing more valuable, nothing in the world was more valuable than the knowledge of the excellence of Christ. That is the way of Christ, the gospel of Christ there. So this again, it speaks to the mindset that all of us as believers This is the mindset that all of us must learn to live by, to where we value God, we value his way, his doctrine. We value Christ, the only begotten son of God. We value the Lord over everything. All of the riches of this world, in the hearts of believers, those riches, they should pale in comparison with God and his riches. Do you value the Lord over the riches of this world? I certainly hope that you do. We'll see there that Paul, he said there in the ninth verse, he tells us that those things, they were rubbish to him because he desired to be righteous in the eyes of God rather than having his own righteousness. You see, Paul, he was working on something that we saw Jesus working on again in my recent sermon that I just preached. He was trying to get those believers, he was trying to get them out of the mindset of putting the worldly riches over the riches of the kingdom of heaven there. You see, there are many people today who are confused by what it means to be blessed and to be highly favored. And you've heard me speak about this before. There are many people that live with this notion that the riches that they gather up in this world that those riches, they determine, they define whether they are blessed or not. There are many people who have, who have gathered much wealth. They have many possessions. They allow those riches, they allow those wealth, that, that wealth that they have gained, they believe that it makes them righteous, that it makes them better than, than anybody else and that, that everybody else should follow their way in order to be blessed and in order to be favored by the Lord. But that is not true. We must understand again, the riches of this world, they are meaningless to God. They are worthless. They don't mean anything to the Lord. And so if they don't mean anything to the Lord, they shouldn't mean anything to us as well. We should again, value God and his riches. We should value the Lord over everything. That is what Paul wanted the believers. That's what he wants us to understand today as well. We'll see there in the 10th verse, he desired to know the power of, of the Lord's resurrection of Christ's resurrection. He desired to be conformed to the death 
of Christ. He tells us in the 11th verse, he sought that he may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Paul, again, he desired true greatness, not greatness that was born of the world, but again, born of the Lord. He tells us there in the 11th verse that his end goal was to attain righteousness. His end goal was to put on glory in the kingdom of heaven. He desired to be clothed in not the world's idea of righteousness. Paul, he sought to be clothed in the glory and the righteousness of God. As I said again in my sermon last week, if you truly desire to be great, if you truly desire to become holy and righteous, then you will follow the Lord. You will turn away from the riches of this world. You will turn away from the worldly ambition to again, gain the riches of this world. And you will turn to the Lord. You will turn to his way and you will live in obedience to his instructions. Because again, I want you to understand, as I said in my sermon last week, God desires for you to be blessed. He desires for you to be great. But again, the blessing and the greatness that the, the Lord desires for you is nothing that the world can provide. Only he can provide it. Only the Lord can make you righteous. Only the Lord can make you blessed. Only the Lord can make you great in his heavenly kingdom. Again, as I asked in my sermon last week, do you desire to be great in the eyes of the Lord? Now we'll see that in the 12th verse that Paul, he speaks to the fact that he had not already attained perfection. You see, Paul, he knew that he was not perfect. You see, I imagine that, that Paul, he dealt with something that, that many believers today deal with. You see, there are many people who try to hinder us, who will try to hinder you in your walk of faith, especially when you first start out in your walk of faith, there are going to be many who will know your past, who will know your history, and they will try to hold you back from, from taking those walk, this, those steps on your journey towards the, the kingdom of heaven. They will say, ah, you can't do that. They will make it seem like it is impossible for you to, to walk by faith, but it is not impossible you should not allow anyone to hinder you in your walk of faith. Do you think that Paul will let somebody hinder him in his walk of faith, holding his past against him? Paul, he knew that he was not perfect. In his letters, we see that Paul, he recounted all the time his history. And Paul, he would say he would admit that he was a sinner. Not only was he a sinner, Paul would admit that he was the worst of the sinners. Don't ever let someone hinder you in your walk of faith by, by trying to call out that you are a sinner. We, we must again understand, we must realize, we must know that we are sinners. So we must be humble, not self-righteous, which a lot of believers struggle with today. They become self-righteous in their walk of faith. No, don't you become self-righteous in your walk of faith. Remain humble, move with a sense of humility. That is what the child of God should do. Paul, he tells us there in that 12th verse that, that he knew again that he wasn't perfect. And he speaks to the fact that, that nobody could tell him some brand new knowledge about himself. He held himself accountable. And so because Paul knew who he once was, he said that he pressed on to be able to lay hold of that which Christ laid hold of him. And that is exactly how you and I, we should move today. We should move with that sense of humility, knowing again who we once were and letting that drive us, letting that move us to, to being obedient to the Lord, to, to being obedient to his way. We should again, as Paul said there, we should press, we should press forward to, to lay hold of what Christ has laid hold of for us, which again is a salvation. We have a promise of being able to inherit the heavenly kingdom. And you and I, 
we should live with that God first mindset, that that heaven focused mindset. Paul, we'll see him again repeat there in the 13th verse that that he for, he would move forgetting about those things which were behind him. And he said that he would reach towards those things were which were ahead. Jesus, he said there in the ninth chapter of Luke's gospel, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. And so that was the mindset that Paul moved in. He took that lesson from Jesus and he learned, he applied it to himself. He wasn't going to look back. And that's what many of those who try to hinder us in, in our walk by trying to bring back up our past, bring back up our history when we walk wickedly. That's what they desire us to do. That's what our great deceiver, that's what our great adversary, the devil, that's what he desires for us to do. He desires for us to look back where the Lord tells us, look ahead, move with hope, move with your eyes again, focused on the hope of the heavenly kingdom, and when we move in that manner, when heaven is the priority in our life, we will be blessed. Now, when we take a look there at the 14th verse, again, it becomes clear to us that, that Paul, he again said there that he pressed toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Do you know what that upward call is. How many of us today are, are pressing toward that mark? Again, our goal should be the heavenly kingdom and we should press toward that mark. Should we be selfish in moving towards that mark? Not necessarily, right? Because again, we are to love not only ourselves, we are to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. That is us again, living with a God first mindset. God is not an inward thinker. He is not one who takes actions out of selfishness. The Lord, he is compassionate towards us as well to all of those who are around us as well, for which we are to be as the children of the Lord. So we'll see there in the 15th verse that Paul, he urged those around him those who were mature enough to be open to the notion and the thought to walk by the same rule, he says there in the 16th verse, and to be of the same mind. And so that is the upward call. That is the mindset again, that, that all of us, we should be on one accord, that we should all be moving with to where again, we press towards the the upward calling towards the goal of inheriting the kingdom of heaven. And again, we do this, we press towards that mark by putting God first in our life. Again, as Paul said, to live is Christ, right? That's what we saw in our Sunday school lesson last week. We are to live focused on the Lord, focused on his way, putting him and his way over everything. We should value, we should value heaven over everything, over, over the riches of this world, even over our loved ones. We are to love the Lord more than anything. To where again, when we think about our loved ones, because that notion, it confuses us. If we see one who we love, moving in the way of error, moving in the way of sin, again, our love should be for the kingdom of heaven, so much so that we will correct the one who is doing wrong, even those who we love the most. Paul, he said there in the 18th verse, he writes to the Philippians of those whom he once spoke of to them. I believe that these were likely some who at one point in time, they walked with Paul. They professed to be of faith. I believe that these were people that, that Paul at one point in time, he loved them dearly. But we'll see there in the 18th verse that, that while he was weeping, Paul wrote how they had turned out to be enemies of the cross. 
And there in the 19th verse, we'll see that, that Paul, he was saddened by this because Paul, he knew the outcome of those who turned out to be enemies of the cross. We know the outcome of those who turn out to be enemies of the cross. Those who turn out to be enemies of the cross, they live as sinners. And we know that God, he, he despises sin. And we know that the Lord, he has no desire to live with. He has no desire to dwell with sin. And so as we saw in our Sunday school lessons in the fall quarter, as we were closing out the fall quarter, God is not going to judge the sinner kindly. He is not going to be merciful in his judgment of sin. He's going to cast sin. He's going to cast the sinner away from him for eternity. And Paul, he knew that. He knew that the, the enemy of the cross, he knew that their end is destruction. So what did, what did they do? What did they do to become enemies of the cross? Well, Paul, he tells us there in the 19th verse that their God was their belly as they set their mind on earthly things. They hungered for what? They didn't hunger for, for the Lord. They didn't hunger for the heavenly kingdom. They hungered for the world. They hunger for the riches of this world, to, to gain all of the riches of this world. And again, this frightens me because so many people, they like to brag about being on their grind. They like to brag about being on their hustle. What are they on their grind and their hustle for? For the riches of this world, not for the kingdom of heaven. And, and does the Lord, is the Lord a, a, a fan of that? No, he, he, he much rather you, you put your, lay up your treasures in heaven, that you value heaven again over the riches of this world that are going to pass away. Paul will see him urge there in the 20th verse. He urges believers to take their minds off of the world. And he speaks to our citizenship not being in this world. Our citizenship, Paul states, is in heaven. And so in this urging, Paul, again, he's trying to, to set our priorities in order. Again, many of us, we, we prioritize this world over the kingdom of heaven. We prioritize this world over the Lord. And where will that get us? Will that get us into heaven? No. That's not going to get us into heaven. So our priorities must be set in order to where we, it's, it's no problem with considering again that we live in this world, but we must understand that we aren't citizens of this world. This place is temporary for us. Eternity is what awaits. And so I don't know about you, but I much rather have my home in eternity be with God than to be cast away from the Lord. I'd much rather be a citizen of heaven than a citizen of the place that we call hell, being eternally separated from the Lord. That was what was on Paul's mind, which again is why, why Paul is telling us again to set our priorities in order by again putting God over everything. Paul, he tells us there again that we should live with the mindset to where we eagerly wait for the coming of Christ there in the 20th verse. And there in the 21st verse, he said that when we live with that mindset, that Christ will transform our lowly body into a body like his, a body that is glorious, a body that is incorruptible, a body where we are going to be clothed in glory. We're going to be clothed in holiness. We are going to be clothed in righteousness. And so that should be our big takeaway from our lesson this week. Do you desire that? Do you desire to be clothed in the glory of God? Do you desire to be clothed in his holiness and in his righteousness for eternity? Or do you desire to stack up your dollar bills in this world? Do you desire to, to stack up the cars that you can own? 
the do you desire to have that great mansion in this world? You see, while those things are nice, and I'm not going to lie, the, the world is beautiful, and, and the riches of this world is beautiful as well. And, and again, I can certainly understand why people want to gain the riches of this world and, and why people want to, to live in comfort in this world. Nobody, nobody wants to struggle in this world. And, and again, I can certainly understand that. But we should not let our aspiration of, of gaining those riches, we, we should not uh, let, let that reach a point to where it reaches a point of greed, to where we are valuing that over everything, even those who are nearest and dearest to us. Again, we need to learn to how to put our priorities in, in order. And I think that, that is something that is really out of whack with with mankind today is that our priorities are not in order to where we are putting the riches of this world above everything including our loved ones and and that's just a backwards way of thinking we must learn how to think forward and the forward way of thinking would certainly be to put our loved ones over the riches of this world that again is my opinion but even more than that, we are to put our love over God over everything, including our loved ones. We must, again, learn to, to live with a God-first mindset. Because when we live with that mindset, then we are living for the kingdom of heaven. We are living in a manner to where we desire to be blessed and highly favored in the eyes of God. We are living in a manner to where, again, we desire to be holy, where we desire to be righteous. We are living in a manner to be great. This is the manner in which the Lord desires for us to live in, to where we live not just for ourselves, but again, we live for everybody that is around us. We live in a manner to where we desire for them to be great as well. And again, when we live in this manner, we uplift ourselves, and we uplift all of those that are around us. We live in a manner to where all of us will be able to inherit the kingdom of heaven. So will you live in this manner today? Will you live in a manner to where you put God first by again choosing him over everything? I certainly hope that you will choose to live in such a manner. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Now, if you haven't done so already, I ask all of you to, to follow our channel. Be sure that you follow this channel so that you don't miss a Sunday School lesson, so that you don't miss a Bible study, so that you don't miss a sermon or a food for thought. Be sure that you are following this channel today.